listen, I have some great revelation I want to share with you from the word of God uh, to help build up your faith so that you can be everything that God has called you to be. You know, in this season, we've been talking about uh, unstoppable faith. We talked about unshakable faith. But today we're going to explore this topic, unlimited faith. Now, this is very powerful because what we want to do now is build up your faith to the point that there are no limits in your life. Praise God. I'm declaring that over your life right now, that what God is about to do in your life, praise God, you are not going to limit him. You are not going to limit the great things that he wants to pour into you, into your family, into your vision, into your dreams. Listen, sometimes we can stop God from really moving in our lives because we are limiting ourselves. But as we get into this word today, we're going to find out what what can we do to expand our faith so we can start walking in unlimited faith, unlimited blessings, unlimited glory in our lives? Here's what the Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse six. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. And so what you need right now in your life is you need faith and you need a whole lot of it. So let's talk about this as we explore the word of God. Now, I want you to understand something in the word of God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter nine, verse 29, there's a story about Jesus and the blind man. And here's what he says to them. He says, he says, uh, he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. In other words, whatever is going to happen in your life is going to be based upon your faith. All right. Now, it's not based upon your credit. It's not based upon your 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 name It's not based upon, you know, your your education It's not based upon your status. It's based upon your faith. And I'm declaring over your life that no matter where you are at, if you can start building up your faith, you're going to see the supernatural happen in your life. In this season, we are declaring decreeing that your faith has no limits. That means you could go as high as you want to go. You could go as far as you want to go. You could do whatever God has called you to do. You know, it reminds me of a story about this man that had these frogs and he had these frogs and he put them in a box. And what happened is when he put the frogs in a box, he put the lid on top of it. And the frogs, every time they would jump, they would hit their head on the lid. And for weeks and for months, he kept that lid on there and the frogs kept hitting their head, hitting their head to the point that the frogs stopped jumping. They stopped jumping. Why? Because they were tired of hitting their head on the lid. Well, guess what? The owner of that box came by, removed the lid off, and he thought that the frogs were going to jump out. But because the frogs were so used to hitting their head on the lid, they stopped jumping and didn't even know that the lid was off. Can I help you with something? There are some dreams, some visions, some endeavors that are on you. And because it didn't work out the way that you wanted it to work out, you stop jumping. You stop trying. You stop believing God. Can I help you with something? This teaching right here is going to help you to understand that the lid is off. And when the lid is off, you could go as high as you want to go in God. You could go as far as you want to go in your life, in everything that God has promised you. I'm telling you right now that the limits are off and you could be everything God has called you to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if we keep exploring the word, we see that in Romans chapter 12, the Bible says that God has given to every man the measure of faith. All right. That means that everyone has a measure of faith for what you're believing God for. You use that measure of faith to sit down in a chair. You use that measure of faith, all right, to turn off the lights on and off. Your faith tells you that I believe that when I turn this switch, lights are going to come on. Faith tells you that I believe that when I sit in this chair, this chair is going to hold me up. That's a measure of faith you use every day. You use that same measure of faith when you accepted Jesus into your life. And because you don't see Jesus, you've never seen him, you don't see God, but what you believe and you use that measure of faith to motivate your trust and belief in God. Can I help you with something? Now we're going to increase that measure. We're going to increase that measure and we're going to get more faith so that we can receive all the great things that God has for us. Now, this is very important because if we need to increase our measure of faith, then that means we need to hear more of God's word. Why? Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, faith cometh by hearing, come on, and hearing by the word of God. So the more word I hear, the more my faith increases. And when my faith increases, wow, there's no limits to what God can do. Now, let me tell you something. I am a personal witness. You're looking at a person that I left my hometown, San Francisco, California, in the year 2003. Me, my wife, and my three children. And we drove out here to Atlanta. We took on Genesis 12, where God told Abraham, he said, listen, I want you to move away from your kindred, and I will cause you to be blessed in the land that you go to. 
to. And the Lord told us that we left, came to Atlanta. We started with nothing, didn't have anywhere to stay, didn't have a job, didn't have a place. I mean, we didn't have anything, but because we kept walking by faith, here we are now, several years later, and look what the Lord has done. All I'm telling you is that what God wants to do in your life is going to be according to your faith. Praise God. All right. So now we understand the Bible says in Romans chapter one that the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. All right. The ways of God, the characteristics of God are revealed from faith to faith. As you keep growing in your faith, you start learning more about what God uh, wants to do in your life. You start learning more about how God functions. You start learning more of his ways and things, and you start learning more about the word of God. Why? Because you are growing. You are increasing from faith to faith. And that's what I'm declaring over your life, that you are increasing, that you're getting stronger and better as you keep going from faith to faith. All right. So with that being said now, now we got to understand that our faith needs to be put into some action. OK, it's, it's not just good enough for you to talk faith. Now it's time for you to do faith. All right. The Bible says in James that faith without works is dead. And so if you are saying that I have faith, now we got to put some works with this faith so that we can see the supernatural take place in our lives. All right. It reminds me of the story I heard a preacher uh, talk about about this man. And he was laying on his deathbed and the people came to see him and he kept telling him, he said, listen, I believe that if I drink this cup of water, I'm going to live. And everybody kept saying, all right, that's great. That's great. And he said it again, I believe if I drink this cup of water, I'm going to live. And everybody kept saying, wow, that's awesome. That's great. And he said it again, I believe if I drink this cup of water, I will live. Boy, people start getting excited. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Here's what he said. I believe if I drink this cup of water and he fell over and died. OK. Now, what happened? He believed that if he drank the water, he was going to live. But what happened? He didn't drink the water. He had faith that the water was going to sustain him, but he didn't activate it by drinking the water. Can I help you with something? It's good to talk faith. It's good to put out what you're believing God for. It's good to speak it and declare it and decree it. But now we're going to have to move to what? Doing it. You're going to have to drink the water. You're going to have to do what God has called you to do. All right. Hey, if you're believing God for you to be healthy and to lose weight and to get and get into more of an exercise mode, how many know you just can't speak it? You got to do something. And so we're declaring decreeing right now that this unlimited faith is going to push you to do something. All right. If you believe it, just say that I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. All right. Now, the Bible helps us with this because uh, there's a story in Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. God is talking uh, through Isaiah, the prophet to the children of Israel. Here's what he says. Enlarge your tent. He says, clear lots of ground, make your tents large and spread out and think big. All right. He says, you're going to need plenty of rope. You're going to take over whole nations and you're going to resettle abandoned cities. He says this. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed and don't hold back because you're not going to come up short. See, in this season now, you're going to have to make a step of faith. You're going to have to stop thinking small and think big. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's something that I got in my spirit right now, that everything that God wants to do in me, it's going to be big. I'm telling you right now, you better get ready because the days of you thinking small are over. You're going to start thinking big. Think big about your ministry. Think big about your business. Think big about the vision that God has given you. Think big about your children. Amen. Push them to be the best. Push them to go all the way to the top. All the great entertainers and all the great politicians and all the great singers that we see today, they had to start small, but they kept pushing until they became big. And all I'm telling you is right now, God wants to make you big. So you got to think on another level. All right. What kept the children of Israel from moving into the promised land was their thought process. God showed them the land. Matter of fact, they brought back fruit and talked about how the land was good and flowed with milk and honey and look at the fruit. But their minds were still in Egypt. And because their minds were still in Egypt, they were never able to walk into the promised land. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God allowed all of them to die in the wilderness except the two people that had a good report. And that was Caleb and Joshua. All I'm telling you now is it's time for you to think big. All right. The Bible says in Hosea chapter four, it says, my 
people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. When you look in the word of God and you get more knowledge about your destiny and you get more knowledge about the opportunities that God has for you, it increases your faith. It changes your thinking. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be broken, disgusted. Listen, get in that word and find out God's promises for you. And when you find out that his promise for you is for you to be healthy, when you find out his promise for you is for you to be wealthy, when you find out his promise for you is for you to experience the best things that God has to offer you, listen, you will change your mindset. I'm declaring the cream right now that as you are watching this program, you're changing your mindset right now. You're going to think big, you're going to talk big, and you're going to act big. Come on, say it with me. Think big, talk big, and act big. It's time for you to do something, and that time is right now in the name of Jesus. See, the Bible says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, you are the product of how you've been thinking. If I could get you to change your thoughts, you'll change your life. I believe I'm talking to somebody right now. You have made up in your mind. I'm going to change the way I think so I could change the way that I live. There is something special that God has for you. And in this moment, you can't afford to miss this opportunity. You got to take hold of the destiny that God has for you and move forward into the great promises that are ahead of you. And I'm telling you, God got some great stuff in store for you. All you got to do is change your mindset. Amen. Amen. I want to break down some things about faith so you can understand how sometimes in life we limit ourselves from receiving the best things that God has for us. The Bible talks about that faith can bring you into a realm of impossibilities. Listen, the Bible says all things are possible to those who believe. And so if we could get your faith up, you're going to see some great things happening in your life. And we're going to go through the word of God and we're going to see how there were certain instances in the Bible where people limited God because of their lack of faith. So we want to get that lack, that doubt, that fear, that unbelief out of you so that you can start moving forward. And this is the great things that God has for you. All right. We're going to see now in certain scriptures, I'm going to point out to you how people had different types of faith and it limited them from receiving the best that God had for them. All right. In the book of Mark, chapter four, there's a story about a storm that arose. Here's what he says. Mark, chapter four, verse thirty nine says, and he rose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, this is Jesus talking. Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith, no faith? Now, there are levels to your faith now. And the level that we do not want to be at is no faith. We can't be at that level because we can't get anything from God. Now, remember, I told you Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. The disciples are in a storm. They have Jesus in the boat, but they're walking in fear. They're crying out, thinking they're going to die. And Jesus awakes, tells the, the, the wind to stop, says, peace be still. And he looks at his disciples and he says, you've been walking with me this whole time and you don't have any faith at all. Can I help you with something? How many of y'all are going through a storm right now? How many of y'all are going through a situation right now where it looks crazy? I need you to understand that you don't have to fret and you don't have to be fearful because Jesus is in the boat. And as long as Jesus is in the boat, I don't know how we're going to get out of this, but we're going to get out of this. Somebody's in a storm right now and you're trying to figure out how am I going to get through this? How am I going to get through this crazy situation? How am I going to get this, sto this storm that's happening with my children, this storm that's happening with my marriage, this storm that's happening on my job, this storm that's happening in my finances, storm attacking my health. Listen, I don't care what kind of storm you're going through. I'm here to let you know that as long as Jesus is with you, you don't have to fret. All right. So let's not deal with that level of no faith. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus rebuked the disciples. He got on them real good because he said, listen, if you rolling with me, you got to have some faith. All right. So that's the level of no faith. Here's another level. All right. Little faith, little faith. Let's look at Matthew chapter six, verse 30. The Bible says, wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Now, this is Jesus talking. He says this, your faith level is at little faith if you're always concerned about provision. 
If you're always concerned about, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to get get by day by day. Now, listen, these are real concerns. These are real issues. I'm not trying to down how you're feeling. All I'm trying to do is take you up to another level. You may be in a, a, a season right now where you're saying, I need provision. I need God to make a way. My brother, my sister, I am right with you because I've been there, done that and got the T-shirt. But can I help you with something? He said in his word that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. The Bible calls him Jehovah Jireh, the one that provides for us. All I'm telling you right now is don't let your faith get stuck at that level of little faith. No, elevate yourself. Declare a decree. God is going to take care of me. The, I, I love that old song that says, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Some of y'all know that song. I'm a witness that God will take care of me. I want to share with you a story even about how God showed me that he was Jehovah Jireh for me. When we first moved out here, I was in a situation and I didn't have enough money to even get my children groceries. Didn't have enough money to get my family anything to eat. All right. And we went to a conference on a Friday night and I heard the woman of God say, I want you to go ahead and sow into what God's going to do in your life. And I didn't have any money. All I had was some change that was in the ashtray of my car. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I got that change out of that ashtray and I put it in a little sandwich bag and I put it on the altar. And I said, Lord, I need you to provide. You know what happened? The next day, Saturday morning, I got a call from one of my friends. He said, hey, are you at home? God told me to go by your house. I got something for you. He came by the house, opened up his van, and it was full of groceries. He said, God told me to fill up your groceries today. Lord have mercy. He brought in all kind of food and we were able to eat for a whole week, a whole nother two weeks until I got paid on the next time go around. All I'm telling you is that God will provide. Glory be to God. And I feel like I'm talking to somebody right now. Don't you get stuck at little faith. Get your faith up. Believe God for the increase that's coming in your life. Amen. All right. So we said no faith. We said little faith. There's another level called great faith. I believe that's the faith we want. Great faith. The Bible says this in Matthew chapter eight gives us a story about uh, a situation with a centurion, a Roman soldier who had somebody at his house who was sick. Here's what he did. The Bible says that the centurion uh, told Jesus, I have a servant at home. He is sick. All right. And I need him to get well. Jesus responds by saying, I'm on my way. I'm going to come to your house. But look what the centurion says in Matthew chapter eight, verse eight. He says, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. The Bible goes on to say, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Did y'all hear that? Jesus himself says, I have not even found great faith. He calls what the centurion did great faith. And what, the, what did the centurion do? He said, speak the word only. I'm declaring over your life, glory be to God, that you are going to graduate from no faith, from little faith to great faith, where you could just stand on your two feet and say, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but speak the word. Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen, but speak the word. Matter of fact, you got to get it in your spirit now to say, I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to find a way to speak the word over my problem. I'm going to find the word to speak the word over my situation and watch God work this thing out. Praise God. I'm telling you, there is a miracle with your name on it. And all we got to do is increase your faith so that you can start walking in great faith and see supernatural results starts taking place in your life. Y'all remember the story about the woman with the issue of blood, don't you? There was a woman in the Bible with an issue of blood. All right. She was sick for 12 years. She spent up all her money on medicine, spent up all her money going to doctors trying to get cured of her disease. She couldn't find anybody that can help her. She couldn't find anybody that could cure her. And now she's broke. No money. All right. Nobody help her. And the disease that she had, she was not even supposed to be out in front of people. But the Bible says when she heard that Jesus was passing by, glory be to God, faith cometh by what? By hearing. When she heard that Jesus was coming, her faith ignited her. Her faith got her up out of her sick bed. Her faith got her up out of that house. Her faith allowed her to push to, through the crowd. She's not supposed to be there. But sometimes when you walk up by faith, you have to break the rules just to get to your blessing. 
The Bible says that she kept saying to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, she kept saying, she kept saying, did y'all hear me? She kept saying to herself, she had to keep saying it until she saw this thing come to pass. She had to keep saying it to motivate her to get to Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs to get to Jesus. Somebody needs to get your manifestation uh, in going right now in your life and in your spirit in the name of Jesus. And all I'm declaring over your life is this is the moment. This is the season. Speak the word. Keep saying it. I have a, I have a saying now. I, I, that I say at my church, say it until you see it. Come on now, say it until you see it. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to call it in. I want you to call in your miracle. I want you to call in your blessing. I want you to call in whatever you're believing God for. Say it until you see it. Keep speaking it until that thing comes to pass. All right. Listen, some of y'all out here that are watching, you may have a, a, a pet at the house. Let's let's use a dog. All right. And, and, and a good dog owner all right, knows how to get a hold of their, of their dog. Now what happens? They leave the house and they come back and they don't see their dog. What is that dog going to start doing? Starts calling, all right, starts calling. Woo-hoo, woo-hoo, all right. Let's just use the word, let's just use the, the word spot, okay? Come on, where you at, spot? Where you at, spot? Spot, what do you do? Keep calling, all right? Now the dog owner is going to keep calling until what? Until spot comes. He's not going to give up. He's going to keep calling until Spot comes. All right. Why? Because he believes that somewhere in this house, Spot is there. All right. He keeps calling until Spot comes. Can I help you with something? You have to keep declaring and decreeing your healing, your deliverance, your breakthrough until you see it manifest in your life. Don't you give up on what God has said about you. You're going to keep calling it in. You're going to keep declaring and decreeing it over your life in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, keep calling on your healing. It's coming. Keep calling on your provision. It's coming. Keep calling on God to save your children. It's coming. Keep calling on your promotion. It's coming. I'm telling you, God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, it's got to come to pass. And I don't know about you, all, I feel a breakthrough right now. Just as I'm talking to you right now, God is up to something. And what you got to do is keep walking by faith. Keep speaking it, keep declaring it and watch it come to pass in your life. Amen. Listen, I want to speak this prophetic word over you right now. If you want to just receive this, just lift your hands and receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I declare a decree that right now you are walking in a season of unlimited faith. And I declare a decree that the things that used to hinder you in your past will no longer have rule in your life. I declare over your life that God is pushing you over it to the supernatural. And you're going to see some things take place in your life that were once unattainable for you. I declare over your life that what used to be hard will now become easy. I declare over your life that you will reach the unreachable and that you will do the impossible. I declare that this is your season to walk in unlimited faith. I pray that you receive that right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that my brother and my sister is walking in a season of unlimited faith. God bless you. And remember, keep walking by faith.